Hello, everybody, and welcome to How to Get Hired. I am the company's expert, and it's great to have you all here today. This is where we're going to do Q&A of anything to do with job search, how to write a resume, how to do an interview, how to discover good jobs, how to apply for the jobs, how to do the various methods of getting a job. Uh, and there are several. So this is a Q&A. You should see the chat right next to me. Get in the chat. Say you're here, ask a question, I will do my best to answer your questions, and uh, that's how we will proceed. And just a reminder for everyone, uh, this is the latest uh, video that I've put out on my channel, so if you haven't seen it, go and check that out. Uh, first time I've ever remade one of my video, a very popular video from three years ago. Uh, this is the remake of it, uh, updated and better for you. And we are going to go over to the polls while we are waiting for uh, the chat questions to come in. Uh, let's do this right now. Let's see if I can get this working. Okay, let's go over the recent polls in the last week and see what you guys have been saying. So the question here, the first question was the best interview question to be asked is, and the winner is, tell me about yourself. I just did a live stream specifically on that question yesterday. Uh, the runner up was, why did you leave your last job? So that's what you guys are wondering. Uh, tell me about yourself. Everybody wonders about that question, but it's really a stupid question. It's the goal should be to get off that question very quickly and get to something a lot more favorable. Um, next question in the polls was, I believe, and here were the options. The world owes me a job. Well, that's not true. Um, you don't want to start life start your career with that attitude, uh, you will probably be checked very quickly. Um, I believe I shouldn't have to change for the world. Now, 16% of you guys said that. Let me explain. The way I meant this when I wrote that question was, obviously there's some things about yourself that you're not going to change. You're not going to submit to peer pressure. But if you just have a blanket attitude that I'm not going to change anything about myself at all under any circumstances, uh, the world has to cater to me. People just have to accept who I am and the way I put myself out there in every respect. Uh, that might also be an issue. Okay, as I'm sure a lot of you guys will quickly find when you are starting out. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to change everything about yourself. Of course you don't, you know, but just thinking you never have to change anything will probably, will probably not work out the way you're envisioning it. But hey. Uh, the other options were when I don't play by their rules, they should like me. Well, obviously that's false. And, uh, they will tell me what's in my best interest. That obviously is false. These are some life lessons that people learn in their, uh, usually their early twenties, if not before. So the answer that I would agree with is none of the above. And 73% of you guys agreed with me on that one. So awesome. Um, next question. If the company's expert did a live event, it should be about how to find a job, how to start a business, how to communicate with people and exploring my own business idea in a workshop. I just threw that out because I wanted to see if anyone was interested to go and see me uh, in person. So apparently the winner is how to communicate with people. I have actually done a course on that that I've almost finished, uh, but I haven't had a lot of chance to work on it lately. So that may come out. Um, and this was a Saturday question. The Saturday question is a fun question. It's a joke. It's a little bit of fun on a Saturday. Uh, there are some people that took this very seriously and, uh, you know, had some really choice comments for me about it. But I don't care because you've got to have a little bit of a sense of humor in your life, even in a professional business context. It just, it just brings a sparkle to every day and it lightens every situation and it can be a way to diffuse tension. So... Here's the question. The question is, it should absolutely only ever be, and in your options are tetrasodium pyrophosphate, Abraham Lincoln, brown, pre-stressed masonry, or a piquant chiasmus. Okay, the winner apparently is Abraham Lincoln. So now we know. Scientists have been wondering about this for years, and finally here today we have the answer. So that's awesome. Thank you to everybody who participated. Uh, only 1.4 thousand people participated in that one, which is lower for me. But here we go. The next question is the formal question, tell me about yourself, um, has no answer. Only 4% of you guys agreed with that. 
uh, has an unlimited number of acceptable answers. That was the winner with 63%. Uh, has only one acceptable answer or signals that I'm not dealing with a good interviewer. Now, this result was a little bit different than what I had envisioned when I, when I put this out there. Um, I would have thought answer D, signals I'm not dealing with a good interviewer. If you uh, go to a job interview and somebody starts off the interview w using this as an icebreaker, they say, tell me about yourself. To me, that signals that, uh, excuse my spitting there, that, excuse, that um, signals that the person you're dealing with is not a good interviewer. They don't have very strong conversational skills. They don't know how to have a lot of rapport with people. Uh, so you're dealing with somebody at a lower level in terms of their communication abilities. People do not talk like this. When you're out at the mall with your friends or you're out whatever talking to somebody or in a work situation, you don't say, so tell me about yourself. It's a very artificial and formal way of talking. Um, so if the in point is to break the ice and get a conversation going and you know get everybody talking to each other and uh, reduce the awkwardness, it is a fail. Um, next question from two days ago. When a recruiter asks you, what can you bring to this company? You should, and the winner is, list the posted requirements for the job and how you meet them. That's generally what people do in this situation, okay? Uh, the reason why you don't talk about your hobbies and your personality is because it's slightly less relevant. Uh, the reason why you don't list the soft skills you will need. I mean, this may work at an entry level job, but generally you don't do this because soft skills are demonstrated, not simply just stated. OK, if I sit there and I tell you, oh, I'm a great people person and I got a lot of charisma. Does that convince you? No, it's something I will demonstrate by how I tell you this or how I talk to you in general. OK, so soft skills are generally demonstrated in a job interview rather than listed and stated explicitly. Um, and the other option was reply with a lighthearted joke that gets everyone chuckling. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, usually interviewers ask, especially formal questions, for a reason. They are looking for something very specific and uh, deflecting it with a joke might be good on a personal level, but in terms of giving them what they're looking for, usually that doesn't satisfy. And finally, the ways to find a job include, and here are four options, answering job ads, volunteering and internships, reaching out to executive managers in applicable companies, and showing up in person at the reception desk of applicable firms. The answer that I was looking for that I would agree with is all of the above, and 70% of you guys agreed with me. These are all very established ways of getting a job. And even the people that only 3% said showing up in person at the reception desk of ap applicable forms. Yes, that's a thing. Yes, it's effective. Yes, it applies to jobs at all levels, surprisingly. And it's actually, it's actually one of the most effective ways of getting a job if you know what you're doing. There is a protocol of how to do it. There is a methodology of how you do this. So. Um, if you don't know about this, then you've come to the right place. We can uh, talk about that if people want. And the poll that's still open today, recruiters are on a range from useless on one extreme to employment experts with insight into skill sets and personalities. Go and fill out this form right now. Uh, cast your vote and we'll see which one wins out. So far, useful in theory, but unhelpful in practice is in the lead. Uh, let's see if we can uh, dethrone that, if that's how you feel. Okay, awesome. So I see there's some people in the chat. There are 22 of you here. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. We're here to do some self-improvement. Uh, get in the chat. If you have questions, ask your questions, and uh, we will go from there. Okay, so Rodrigo Martinez says, hello. Hello, Rodrigo. It's great to see you here. WCK champion, Marco, my buddy Marco. Marco and I are like this. Uh, hi, Bill. I had a first step, uh, had a first step today and it went very smoothly. I guess first step interview proceeding to the next step with a high probability. I did mention my recent layoff as it justified me signing a contract in Switzerland for the first time. And then hopefully this time again, the recruiter appreciated my honesty and it worked. You were awesome. Okay, great, great. Good stuff. I'm glad things are going well. 
uh, and that's good to get an update. Rodrigo, you're doing an awesome work. Helps me make job hunting, the job hunting grind less dull and how to be awesome at interviews. Well, good, good. Listen, the thing about interviews, the thing about the whole job search process, okay? And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Every person needs to understand this, especially young people uh, that are maybe not told this in school or in any kind of job, you know, market preparation class or whatever you might have taken. It's a numbers game, okay? It's a numbers game. The idea is that you have certain skills, you have certain abilities, you have a certain value, and depending on who you encounter, they will have widely different estimates of your value. Some people will instantly like you and think you're amazing. Other people, they really don't value anything you have and you just don't click as people, okay? You don't have that rapport. And a lot of times what we see is people who come from a different background see less value in your background, okay? So for example, if you're an engineer, and you ask an HR person, like say a recruiter, you know, what's the value of this person? Generally, they'll have a lower estimate of your value. However, if you talk to another engineer, they will have a much higher estimate of your value, okay? Because there's a lot more points of similarity there, okay? This is the unfortunate aspect of human nature. People, uh, they're very self-centered and they think that what they have is really important and really useful. So if they encounter someone who has like nothing that they have and instead a whole bunch of other things that they don't have, they generally will look less favorable on that person. So the result of this is that you go to one place, they, th you know, you, they, uh, you do a job interview with them. They think you're an absolute non-starter. Okay. And then you go to another place and you give basically the same job interview. You answer the pretty much the same job interview questions and you uh, act the same and say the same kind of things, but they will think you're awesome and they will hire you. Okay. Everyone goes through this. So when you get rejected for a job, it's not like a message or a signal that there's anything wrong with you and you're unemployable and you have no value. Although sometimes it feels like that, especially when you're starting out. Uh, that's just, oh, it didn't work for these people. I'm just not what they happen to be looking for. That's cool. There are other people out there. I am what they're looking for. And my quest is to connect with those people. Okay. To link up with them. Okay. So it's a numbers game. So every job interview you go to, you know, do your best, but don't sweat it. You know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out favorably, just keep going. Never look back. Always look forward. And the goal is to get a large quantity of interviews and also high quality interviews. Quantity and quality are both important here. And that will lead you to uh, connect with the person that thinks you're awesome. Okay, uh, let's go back to the chat here. We got some more questions. Ask your questions. This is a Q&A, so get in the chat. There's 27 people here. Um, what are you wondering? What are you looking to know? What are you looking to solve? when it comes to your career. Uh, WCK champ, I already did that one. Uh, gl glowy potato. I think that's supposed to, I think that's supposed to say, yo, it says you, you, what is up? <laughs> I think it says, yo, you could just go, yo, 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 right? That's exactly what people, what all the kids are saying these days. That's what they said in 1984. So that must be what they're saying today. Rodrigo Martinez says, I would like to know the protocol and be prepared to apply in person and know what I'm doing. That would be great. Okay. Excellent question, Rodrigo. Here's how you can uh, use that method to get a job. Okay. First off, you've got to find applicable companies. So you've got to be able to do a, uh, like I did a couple of live streams ago. You know what? Just screw it. We'll just do it now while we're waiting for questions also. Um, let me go over to, let me just get a web browser window going here and we will do this here. Okay, this is not working. It's having problems finding Google. That's when you know things are, things are really working. Uh, here we go. 
Okay, so let's see if I can change my screen over. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Where would you be? What city? What part of the world? I don't know. Uh, random. You know, let's go to Cincinnati. I don't even know where Cincinnati is. I don't even know how to spell it. Cincinnati. There, there we go. Cincinnati. See, I, I learned something today. Let's pretend that you are in Cincinnati and you want to apply for a job in person. You want to exploit that method. So I type in Cincinnati and then I hit maps. Okay, like right up there. So this is Cincinnati, right? Now, what, what industry are you in? Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe like IT, something like that. Maybe you're a developer. Okay. Like just to use a common thing. Okay. So software, right? I mean, we did software last time. I don't know what else you could do. Um, uh, data center, I guess American spelt like this. So data center. Now that's not something super common, but we'll see what shows up. So, so on a map of Cincinnati, let's say you live right in downtown Cincinnati. Okay. So this is downtown Cincinnati. Uh, I'm just going to say search this area again. It might show up other things. Okay, so a couple more things popped up. So what's this? Something called Level 3 Communications, uh, Miles Technology, Dart Points, H5 Data Centers. Okay, so for each of these, uh, it, let's say this was my area of commute, okay? This was my area where any physical employer, like in that area, I would be able to physically commute to. It wouldn't be like a hundred kilometers away, 200 kilometers away. It would be reasonable. Okay. It'd be close to my home and it would be conceivable that I could work there. So right off the bat, I look at data center and things are popping up. So let's look at this one here, H5 data center, Cincinnati. So if I click on it, okay. Um, yeah, here we go. So it gives you some information. First of all, it gives you their address, their phone number, um, and usually like a website or anything like that. So, I mean, I suppose you could go to the website and see if they have job postings, but that's not really what we're going to do here. What we're going to do is we're going to make a short list of these companies. Okay. Now, depending on what you're looking for and where you are, uh, you might be able to get a lot of companies in a very small space. If there's like an industrial park or something like that, or if you work in retail and there's a mall nearby, you know, like that kind of thing, right? So there might be a lot in here and you can do more than one search. You make a list of these companies and then you do another search. I don't know what would be appropriate for like if you're a developer or a systems admin. Uh, I'm, I'm not in IT anymore. So instead of saying data center, you could say, I don't know, IT services. Okay, so you'd run multiple searches. Okay, this is slow for some reason. Uh, did it, did it? Yeah, okay, it changed over. So here's all the results for IT services. So we got... Some of the same companies like data points, but other things are starting to show up too. What's this? TechFac is TechFac Business Services Group. It looks like a lovely place, very homely, very rustic. Um, here are its inf contact information. Okay. So what you do is you make a short list of all these companies and then you can physically go to these companies. Okay. You can physically go there. So either you're pounding the pavement, you're walking or you're driving in a car or, you know, whatever. And you walk into the building. Okay. Now, usually what you're going to encounter is some kind of reception desk. Okay. So you go up to the reception desk and what you have with you is you have copies of your resume. Okay. Now, what I strongly recommend is that you print off some kind of business card and your business card just has your name maybe a little picture of your face, a professional headshot, um, and your contact information. Okay. So your email address and your phone number and you know what, and the all important thing, okay, right under your name, it has your tagline and your tagline is who you are. Okay. So if you are a student that's still in school, that's looking for, um, I don't know, someone to give you a tour of a company, you would write student. But if you are a, an IT professional that specializes in systems and men, something like that, you would say on your business card, this is my name, and then I'm a systems admin or systems administrator. That's who I am. You know, or if you're a developer, you'd say your name and then 
developer. It may, may be the language that you specialize in. I don't know, C sharp developer, you know, whatever. Okay. So that's who you are. That's what you have on your business cards. I would highly recommend it. It really doesn't cost very much money. It's like $20 equivalent to print up like a thousand business cards or you know, something like this. Okay. So you come with a resume and your business card. Okay. And you go up to the reception desk. And usually there's going to be some kind of receptionist. And one of their functions is they are a gatekeeper. Okay. You know, if you want to get into the company and talk to people, you got to go through them and you get their permission. Okay. Now here's what you do. What makes this really good is if you've done a little research ahead of time and you know the name of the per the individual you'd like to talk to, the hiring manager, you know, the person that's running this department, the person that's the, let's say it's uh, let's say you're in IT and uh, you're going to a data center. Who would be the person to talk to? Maybe they'd be the uh, chief information officer or the chief operating officer or the director of IT. Okay. Now, if you've done some research on LinkedIn, you entered the name of the company, like this tech fact business services, you went to LinkedIn and you entered tech fact business services and you did a people search and you see some of the names of the individuals, right? So you could ask for individuals, right? But that step is not necessary. Okay. Let's say you haven't done any of that. You just know tech fact business services. You haven't done any more research. You go up to the reception desk and you talk to the receptionist. and you say, hi, uh, is the director of IT available right now? Would I be able to possibly speak with them? Okay. Now the answer that you're going to get over 90% of the time is no, they're not available now. Okay. And that's fine because what you do is you say, okay, not a problem. Um, I would just very much like to drop this off and you give like, you know, you a copy of a resume, maybe in an envelope, uh, something like that, or, or just fold it over and a business card. You say, would it be possible for me to leave this for them? Would, would you be able to pass that on to them? Now, usually 90 over 90% of the time they'll say, sure, not a problem. Okay. So, and then you say, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. And that's it. That's all you do there. Okay. Now, then what you do is you go away, you go back home after doing this to several companies. Okay. And you start following up. Okay. You call the company. So tech fact business services, where, where was that here? If I click on the thing, um, here we go. Like here's their phone number. So you call their general number. Okay. And oh, something I forgot to mention while you're at the reception desk, if after dropping off your resume, you say like, uh, you know, can I ask like, what's their name? The director of it services or the director of services, they may give you a name. They say, oh, that would be John Smith. I say, okay, if you could leave that, if you could pass that on to John Smith, I'd really appreciate it. And they say, okay, no problem. I say, thank you. Have a great day. So now you call, you go away and you call the main number for the company. Um, sorry, you can't see my, you can't see my uh, screen here. So this is this tech fact services, right? If you look here, this is their main switchboard, right? Their, their contact number right here. So you call that number and you say, hello, my name is Bill or whatever your name is. I'm just following up. I, um, left. Oh, you try and get patched through to the director of IT service. You say, hi, my name is Bill. Um, I'm just following up to see if you received my, uh, my message or my letter or my resume that I dropped off at the front desk, just following up to see if you received that. Now, no matter what they say, if they say, yes, I got it. Or they say, no, I didn't get it yet. Uh, you say, okay, no problem. Listen, I just want you to know that I'm a systems admin and I have skills in this area. And I know about your company. I know you guys do some really interesting work in this area. If ever you're looking for someone who can help you with this, uh, you know, please keep this on file and, and keep me in mind. Thank you very much. Have yourself a great day. You know, that's all you do. Okay. That's it. That's the whole process. Now I know I kind of explain this in a very roundabout way, uh, but it's actually pretty simple. It's just a couple of steps. And this makes a great impression. What are the advantages of doing this? I'll tell you. Number one, first of all, you're demonstrating your initiative. Okay, you're a person that can initiate things. You can get things done. Okay. Number two, how many people do you think do this? Not very many. Okay. So already you are elevating yourself above the crowd because you are doing this. Okay. You are demonstrating like, I care 
about working specifically here, so much so that I've actually come to your physical location, I've spoken to people here, and I've made a follow-up phone call, okay? And to answer some questions from people that have asked me in the past, yes, you can send a message instead of a phone call, but phone call is much more effective, okay? And because you have a legitimate reason to call, you're following up to see if you received my resume. That's why you're calling, okay? Um, it makes it a lot less stressful. You know, you're not trying to bother anybody. It's very, very simple and straightforward to do. Um, and then no matter what they say, it's fine, okay? Like if they got it or they didn't get it, it's fine. But this elevates you above the crowd. It demonstrates that you're serious about working here. You're not applying to a thousand jobs. You know, you care about specifically working here. Thirdly, somebody in the company, namely the receptionist, has already interacted with you physically. They've already met you. Um, you know, so a common thing, if the hiring manager is looking for someone with your abilities, one of the things that they'll do is they'll go talk to the, rece the receptionist and they say, you know, this person that uh, dropped off this resume yesterday, what did you think of them? Were they, uh, were they rude or were they, were they easy to deal with? And they'll say, oh, they were pretty nice, you know. So, so somebody at the company has interacted with you. Uh, they've met you already. The hiring manager has spoken to you already. So they've got like more of a feel for who you are and uh, how you are as a person. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's other advantages too, but I mean, right off the top of my head, that's three things that really, really speak in your favor. So this is how I would recommend doing this. And I, uh, I mean, a lot of people do this. I've done this before. I've had students that have done this and come back and reported to me, oh yeah, I got the job by doing that. So it's actually very effective. It's not the easiest thing to do in the sense that you can't do a thousand companies like this, but it's actually, um, if you're serious about, you know, working at some of these and they're like right next to your home or something, or it would be a good job because you, it takes you five minutes to get to work or something. This is a very effective method, uh, to get those. Okay. So, uh, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of details out, but, but that's basically it in the nutshell. Uh, okay. So where were we here? Um, so that was Rodrigo. So hopefully that makes sense. Rodrigo. Yes. Applying online can only get you so far. Yes, I agree with that. But I mean, there are other things there. There's, there's things between, between applying online and, and doing this applying in person. There are a lot of things in between that, right? So there, there are other, other methods too. Uh, they're kind of like a halfway house. You don't necessarily have to go to this extreme to get a job, this is one method that people uh, can use as, as something in their job search campaign. Okay, when they ask if I, this is Gilby, Gilby703 says, when they ask if I have any questions for them, can I ask them if they could change something negative about the company? What would it be? No, I would not ask that. Um, here's the deal. Okay, first of all, you don't want to mention anything negative in an interview about yourself and you don't want to get them to ask them any negative questions. Like, for example, let's say you're introduced to a new person, right? And, you know, they say, hi, my name is John. How's it going? And they feel they have to start the conversation by saying something or asking you a question. They'll say, oh, I guess uh, wearing those clothes didn't work out for you. Right? Like, it, yeah, it's, it's a conversation starter. It's like, oh, no, actually, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to replace these for a while. Yeah, you could start a conversation like that, but it's negative, right? So if you ask a recruiter something negative about the company or you ask a hiring manager something negative about the company, it's like wandering into somebody's house and saying like, oh, you know, I can see you have problems keeping the place clean, right? It's not something they want to talk about. It's not something that that they're proud of. It makes them feel a little embarrassed, right? So instead you'd want to ask them a question that they enjoy answering because then they get a better, good feeling about you. You know, like the whole point of this is to make a good impression. Essentially it's a sales pitch for you, right? And what you're trying to do is saying, look how thoughtful I am. Look how awesome I am to deal with. Look how on the ball I am and look how much you would love working with me, right? So 
I wouldn't ask them negative things. What's the biggest problem that you haven't yet overcome? You know, and they're like, oh, you know, and then now they feel conflicted because they can't really keep it real. They'd like, you know, maybe they would like to tell you all about some of the challenges that they're working on. But at the same time, they're also trying to project a positive image of themselves and of the company. This is a place people would want to work. This is a desirable job. You know, this is where we have our act together. Right. So it's like asking a recruiter, you know, what's the worst part of your job that you hate? What is that? You know, it's not something they're going to enjoy responding to. They're going to squirm a little because they can't really keep it real. And it, regardless of what they say, they're not going to enjoy answering those type of questions. They'd much rather answer, what's the best part of your job? The thing that makes you love doing this. And they'll say, oh, well, the best part is meeting people or, you know, when I get to give good news to people that they're hired, you know, they, they're overjoyed. They thank me profusely. It's a great feeling. You know, they enjoy talking about that, right? So you always want to ask positive type questions. Okay, you don't want to ask a question that can make somebody feel bad or they have to squirm answering because they can't really tell you, they can't really give you the dirt on, on themselves or what they're doing. Hopefully that makes sense. But it's a great question, Gilby. That, that's a great question. Um, Min. Min, I remember Min. You used to be in the chats. I haven't seen you for a while, but that's cool. Hello, sir. Long time no see. I'm really happy to see you. I was mental depression and social problems because my girlfriend left me after six years. I'm sorry to hear that, Min. Uh, now I feel better. Very happy to see you. Well, welcome back. And I hope that uh, you're feeling back on top very soon. Uh, Tanya. Tanya says, could you talk a bit about how to grow career, get better position in the company and better salary? Sure. Um, okay, that's obviously a huge topic, but some points are, okay, how to grow your career. Well... Listen, um, there is a natural progression as you get older to become more knowledgeable, to become more experienced, to become wiser. Uh, and in addition to your technical skills, your social skills, all things being equal, tend to get better as you have more experience interacting with people. Okay. So that's a very general tendency. However, if you don't really do anything uh you don't actively work towards that the rate that that improves is very slow okay so as you uh get more experience as time passes i mean i know this is such a cliche but self-improvement is the way to go the number one thing for most jobs is your social skills and other soft skills like being able to um like for example a general trend that you'll see is that when someone is 20 years old, they will change uh, when they're 40, okay? When you look at them when they're 40, they're not the same as when they're 20. One of the things is they learn to act more appropriately and more professionally. So they'll dress a little more businesslike. They will conduct themselves in terms of what they say and how they act in a little more professional way, okay? Uh, they will be better at speaking to people, they will be better at working with people, they will be better at negotiation, they'll be better at public speaking, they will be better at conversations, and they'll be better at persuading people, okay? Now, the other realization is that, you know, some people know this when they're 20, but a lot of people don't. It's that there are many different types of people, different personalities, different learning styles, different backgrounds, and it's always very easy for us to interact with people who are like us. So if I'm an introvert and you're an introvert, we can get along pretty well. If I'm an accountant and you're an accountant and you're also an accountant, we can generally relate to each other better. Um, but if I'm an accountant and you're a salesperson, it doesn't really click. If I'm an extrovert and you're an introvert, it doesn't really click. As we get older, we generally learn uh, how to interact and work well and persuade and blah, blah, blah with people who are not like us, okay? That's, a, that's where the real talent lies in being able to work well together with people who are not like us, okay? 
in order to respect and see the value in other people who are not like us, okay? This is something that a lot of 20-year-olds, certainly myself included, uh, when I was 20, just don't understand and, and don't do, okay? So everything you can do to speed that process, to get a jump start on it, to learn as much as you possibly can, to get as much experience as you possibly can, to learn from your mistakes as much as you possibly can in these areas, all of that will combine to make you the person that someone would want to promote, want to hire, uh, want to work with, okay, someone they would see value in, like immediately and, you know, over time, okay, all of those things will help, okay? Uh, so you can really get ahead of the curve by recognizing this and, and really pushing your skills in those areas. Okay. Uh, that would be my single biggest piece of advice to grow a career. Okay. Um, and also I suppose I, I'll mention like a lot of technical skills. It's great, but they usually need to be updated as we go. You can't just like learn a thing and then not develop that knowledge for the next 10, 20 years. Usually you have to be updating it. Okay, or adding to it. Okay, but you do that stuff and you will become more hireable, more promotable. Um, opportunities will open up for you. And also learning, uh, like a part, of, a part of your soft skills is also like learning networking. Okay, if you work in a job where you have to, uh, like you're a project manager of some kind, you have to make things happen. You have to, un you know, take on a challenge that, you know, it's not really your background, but you still have to get it done. Uh, that kind of work. Networking is very important, like knowing who can help you, how to get assistance with it. Uh, what are the resources? Who are the people that can, that, that know the information that you want to learn and how to get it from them? Knowing all that stuff really helps too. Okay. That's kind of the difference between somebody at 20 and somebody at 40, 50, 60. Hopefully that helps. And yes, better sal salary follows with all that stuff. Okay, for example, let's say, you know, you're, I don't know, an advertising executive or an advertising person working in a department of advertising people when you're 20, okay? You're just another advertising person. Um, however, when you add these skills, now you're the advertising person that they select to run the advertising department, supervise the others, and you're the person they select to represent the company at a trade show or at a conference or whatever. You're the person that they will want uh, to promote. You're the person that they will naturally see as the leader and so on. Motion says you didn't answer my question. Motion, did I see your question? I don't see any previous question motion. If you could, if you could uh, uh, type it again, I suppose. Um, Hannah says, if I only have a high school, like high school education, I don't have a higher academy degree. However, I have worked in prestigious places as an administrator. How can I introduce myself in my next interview? Well, I don't know. You can just say who you are. I mean, uh, there's no real trick to it. Listen, um, listen, there's a very important principle here. Um, for people that are very successful, okay, generally speaking, okay, the way this works is you rely less on impressing people and instead you just do it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying you're, there's anything wrong with your question, Hannah. I'm just saying that getting good jobs do, do not in, depend on on sort of making a good impression to recruiters, okay? Recruiters, by definition, they're not impressed by this stuff. It doesn't matter what you say. Um, a recruiter's job is they look for very specific things, okay? For their, their, what their job is, is a hiring manager comes to them and says, I need you to get me some candidates that have these 12 things. Okay. That's your job. Go out and find me some candidates that have these 12 things. Okay. 
They have five years in this. They have five years in that. They have this degree. They have that training. They have this skill, right? And recruiters, what they do in a job interview or any other assessment where they look at you is they just simply look, do you have these things? Okay. If you do, you're a contender. Okay. Now on top of that, they also look for red flags. Okay. Is this person crazy? Is this person a criminal? Is this person untrustworthy? Is this person antisocial? Does this problem, does this person have mental issues? Does this pro- person have extremist points of view? All of those would be red flags. Are they self-employed, meaning that their loyalty would be divided between us, you know, like giving them a day job or their own side project? Uh, that would be a red flag. They look for things like that, and that's the extent of their job. So how you phrase an introduction, the only thing that matters is are you, are you giving any red flags? If you're talking to a recruiter, all they care about is, are, is there anything inappropriate or questionable about what you're saying? Okay. So it's not a matter of like, you know, how do I impress people the most by this really fancy introduction? It's a matter of, you know, I just want to make sure I'm not giving any red flags. Okay. And then on top of that, all you have to do is be as likable as possible. And that's the only task you have. So I don't know your background. I don't know your personality. I can't tell you how you should introduce yourself, but hopefully that's like kind of the, you know, the, the parameters that you have to work within, you know, just be super friendly, uh, be very agreeable, uh, tell them what you have, be able to summarize your resume and, and have that tagline. So this is who I am, you know? Uh, do you say like, I have, you know, I have high school, but I have extensive experience working in this area. That's, that's who I am, you know, something like that. So it's easily understandable. They're not left puzzled wondering, okay, who, who are you? What do you do? You know, just make it very easy. You know, hi, my name is whatever. And I have extensive work experience in this area. That's what I do. You know, it's very good to meet you. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, really nice advice. Somebody with uh, Cyrillic script says really nice advice is thank you very much. You're absolutely welcome. Tommy says how, so how can I, as a junior graphic designer, get better jobs? I already work in a company, but it's not working, for, but it's not working for me. I apply to so many jobs on indeed or LinkedIn and don't get responses. Any help? Yes. Networking. That's like, I'm sorry to always sound like a broken record, but, but that is what you do. Okay. So for example, um, you use the thing that I always advocate because it's so easy is to use LinkedIn to connect with hiring managers, not recruiters. Do not connect with recruiters. It doesn't really get you anywhere. Hiring managers. Okay. The people who are the people that would hire a graphic designer. Okay. Whoever those people are, you connect with them. Okay. And then the the most basic way to do, to get a job through networking is to send out a message to those people and saying, hello, I'm here. I'm a graphic designer. I solve this problem. I know you guys do work in this area. If ever you're looking for a graphic designer who can help you with this, please keep me in mind. Thanks very much. Have a great day. That's all. You just send out that message. Now, most of the time you won't get a response because that person is the odds are is that they're not looking to hire a graphic designer right now. Okay. But people are hiring. Okay. So you will get some responses. If you, if you send that message to a hundred people, 200 people, 500 people over, you know, a couple of weeks or something, we'll get some responses and people say, uh, you know, maybe there's potential. Can we, should we, we should get together and talk. And that's the best way to get a job. You meet with a hiring manager, you meet with them at the local Starbucks or coffee shop or a place like that. It's on neutral ground and you just have a conversation. And uh, if you don't know how to do this, great, you're going to learn. And it's an incredible skill. A moment ago, I was talking about how to improve your soft skills. One of those is a conversational, is, is our conversational skills. This is great practice. It's very simple. All you do is you say, it's very nice to meet you. And then you ask them a series of questions about them and the work they do. Things that they will probably want to talk about. You know, it's like, I understand you do this type of work. You know, how does that work? You know, or, you know, what's the best part of it? 
what's, you know, like this kind of thing. Or you ask some general questions about the industry and you get their opinions about things. Okay. These are, these are very simple, common things. And that usually leads to people talking a lot, right? I, t I used to tell a story on these live chats when I started out. Something had happened to me five years ago. Maybe it's a bit more now, six years ago. I met the CEO of, I, I set up one of these meetings with the CEO of the local international airport in my hometown. And, uh, you know, I had a meeting. I went to their office. Their office was in the control tower. It's an older control tower that they had turned into offices. So I got this giant office, like the office is the size of the ground floor of my house. And, uh, I walked in and I said, you know, Hey, you know, it's uh, very, very nice to meet you. So how's business? And they talked for 45 minutes straight. And I can't remember. I think it was half an hour. They gave me half an hour. Or something like, you know, we, we'd scheduled a half an hour meeting. They talked for 45 minutes straight. Their executive assistant came in and said, you know, uh, you know, you've got, you've got something else. And, 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 he, and, and he said, no, no, um, you know, like, I don't know, cancel it or just, I, I need more time with this. We ended up talking for an hour and a half in their office. So you ask questions about them. Okay. Ask questions that they will enjoy talking about. Ask them their opinion on their industry. And holy crap, most professionals will go on forever. Okay. And this is great because you're learning. And at the end, they'll love you because, you know, they had a very pleasant conversation with you. Right. You know, so, so anyway, these are some basic skills, right? If you can have a conversation with anybody at any time, you could strike up a conversation and they tell you all kinds of stuff that you're interested in and they love talking to you. That's a great skill. You know, doors open for you when you can do that. Okay, so that's the other reason that uh, I recommend people do this. Okay, so, um, so hopefully that makes sense, Tommy. Um, you know, networking is the way to go. Now, I know when you're learning anything new at the very beginning, it's kind of you're, you're, you're confused and, uh, you know, it's kind of intimidating, but it's really not that hard, okay? I mean, I'm an introvert. I'm an engineer type. And, you know, I come from a family of introverts and I'm an only child. So I did not have very advanced social skills growing up. And if I can do this, practically anybody can do this. It's just many years of doing it and practicing. And you know what? I would much rather talk to executives than most other people because generally executives have very good conversational skills. They're very likable. They're very friendly. I mean, yes, there are exceptions and I have met some extreme exceptions to that, but you know, I enjoy it. And when you see it working, you go, holy crap, this is awesome. And then you want to do more of it. Okay. And that's how opportunities happen. Career opportunities happen. And in this day and age, there's, it's, there's more things out there than just getting a job. You know, they'll hire you for consulting work. They'll hire you. They'll bring you in to do stuff. Uh, it's great. But it starts with that kind of thing. Uh, Phenomenal Paul. That's an awesome name, by the way. Best name so far. Phenomenal Paul. That's like calling yourself Ken Tremendous or something. I was interviewed by a company COO, okay, so Chief Operating Officer, in January, who said I will get feedback from them. Now, the thing about COOs, operate, operations people, is that generally they have less social skills. Okay, they're a lot more blunt than, say, the uh, chief marketing officer. Okay, I reached out and was told the recruitment process is still ongoing and that I should be patient, kindly advised. Well, look, if they want you to be patient, you be patient, okay? While they're being patient and you're being patient, keep moving forward, okay? If they come back to you and something happens great but in the meantime don't stress over like you know will these people get back to me you keep moving forward okay it's entirely in their court and like i said earlier it's a numbers game you can't just go to like one or two people and then just cross your fingers and pray you've got to go you've got to generate many opportunities because the way these things work is that you know how many people are hiring right now? Is it 50%? No, it's like 10%, 20%, somewhere in there, right? Um, of the applications that uh, you send out, do 50% of them come back with job offers? No, it's more like 
5%, 1%, less than 1% if you're doing stuff online, right? So it's about generating a quantity of, oppor- of opportunities and trying to get the quality of those as good as you possibly can, okay? It's a numbers game. It's exactly like sales. A salesperson, you know, like, like let's say you go to the grocery store, you know, you know, to buy food, right? To buy groceries. And you know, there's people wandering around with uh, the plate of free samples. They got like cheese on a stick or something like that, right? Now, they're trying to sell a product by giving you a free sample of it, right? How many people do they talk to? Do they just talk to one customer? And then the customer leaves and they are like, oh, you know, I hope they buy it. I hope they buy it. I wonder if they'll buy. They don't give it any more thought. They move on to the next person. They talk to hundreds of people a day. How many people take a free cheese on a stick sample? Many, many people. Of those, how many people buy the product? 5%, maybe, somewhere in there, right? That's the way it works with job interviews. You got to get a quantity of opportunities. And if they wanted to interview with you, great, okay? You pursue it as far as it goes, but if they've sort of put a stop on it and, say, and, and they say, we'll get back to you, okay, not a problem, right? You move on. If they end up getting back to you, awesome. But in the meantime, you're moving forward. You're not stressing uh, over th- whether they'll get back to you. You're not, you know, putting your mental health at risk, stressing and worrying about it and thinking like, what ifs and what I should have done to get a different result. Don't worry about that. Keep moving forward. Okay, it'll be better for your mental health. It'll be better uh, results-wise. Okay, it's great. It's great. You talk to a COO, you know, some people are very proud of that. Um, You know, but now it's time to move on. Okay. Talk to another COO. Talk to several more. Talk to some directors of operations or whatever it is that you're doing. Do a whole bunch of them. And then the odds are very high that one of them will call you back and say, yes, here's an offer. Okay. Uh, Gilby. Gilby, 703. If we can't ask them what negatives they would change, how do we answer them when they ask us the same question? What you don't, what do you don't you like? And how would you change it? Uh, Listen. The job interview is a sales, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a sales pitch. When you get that, when you go to the store and the person's trying to sell you with a free sample, do you say, now has this company who made this product, have they poisoned any rivers? I heard in the media that they might've poisoned some rivers. What's up with that? It's like, do you sell a product by doing that? No, no, you don't. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I understand. You would love to get the dirt on them. You would love to know now all the things that are going to be a problem for you when you start working there. I totally get it. Okay, that's what we want. But understand that the more that you bring up negative stuff and you ask them about negative things and they have to talk about it, the likelihood of them offering you a job goes down. Okay, it's that simple. Of course, there are exceptions to this. You get all kinds. But generally, across the board, the more of that stuff you bring up, the least likely you get to the point where you're offered a job. Okay, so it becomes academic. Okay, yes, they can ask you negative things about you. That's in fact what they're going to do. They're going to try and get the dirt on you. I've made that point many times in a lot of my videos. A lot of people take exception to me making that point, but it's absolutely true. Everybody knows this. They're going to try and find out what's really up with you, uh, especially if it's the classic low level job where you're doing a job interview with a recruiter, they go in not trusting everything you say. They, they go in with the assumption that you're hiding a bunch of things. They want to know what's wrong with you. Why shouldn't we hire you? They'd love you to just answer that question freely. That's why they ask you things like, so what are your weaknesses? Right. And when we're green and you know, when we're honest, we say, oh, well, you know, I can be very lazy and sometimes I have a bad temper And, uh, you know, I have a real problem with finishing a lot of things that I start and they go, Oh, thank you very much. And then they eliminate you based on what you just told them. Right. Stupid, but it's true. Okay. So this is the stupid little dance that you've got to play. Okay. Or you've got to dance. 
So that's how this works. It's not like a sort of let's put our cards on the table and really uh, get to the bottom of this. That's not what's going on. This is a sales pitch. Okay. Everyone can argue that it should work that way. And I agree it should work that way, but it doesn't. So if you want to be successful because they're doing it this way, you have to play by their rules. The great thing about networking is that you can do more of that. Okay. If you talk to somebody, you have an informational interview with that hiring manager and you started off by asking them, well, like I did, you know, so how's business? And they go on forever. They talk to you all about, in this case that I said earlier, the example I used earlier with the CEO of the local international airport in my city, uh, they went into all the issues with the economy, with changing regulations for aerospace, with some of the operational challenges they've had with new ways of doing business. You know, the uh, putting more things online, uh, you know, he shared with me his belief that in the future there won't really be discrete airlines because quite frankly, nobody cares about what airline you fly, only that you get there and what the price is and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I didn't share that belief, but, but you know, talking about that stuff and then you, then you would talk about the challenges. Here's what we're struggling with. Here's what's not working very well right now. Here's the problems that I really don't know how to solve and I'm and I'm just still stumbling around in the dark trying to solve, you know? You can get to that later. If they want to disclose that, they're comfortable with you, you know, they think it's an interesting thing and you think you might be able to suggest some things that they might find interesting, great, you could talk about that stuff. But, you know, it, it's easier to talk about it because it's just two professionals getting together to talk, right? There's no job on the line. They're not interviewing you for a job. They're just... You're just getting together and talking and seeing if there's any common ground, seeing if there's a fit, right? If it does work out really well, then you can get back to them later and say, you know, I was thinking about that thing you said, and I might be able to help you. So if ever you've got an opening, like, you know, let me know because I might be able to, to assist you with that, you know, something like that. You can follow up and maybe it goes somewhere, but in a, just in an informational interview, you know, you can talk about that stuff, but not in a job interview. Okay. Job interview is a sales pitch. And specifically, it's a sales pitch for your soft skills, not your technical skills. If you didn't have the technical chops that qualifies you for the job, they wouldn't have invited you to an interview. So despite what they say, they feel that you're most likely technically qualified. What they want to know now is who are you as a person? Are you crazy? Are you impossible to work with? Are you uh, the type of person that, you know, you... Your heart just isn't in this type of work. So if they hired you, you'd probably lose interest and quit. You know, that's what they want to know in a job interview. Okay, so asking them a bunch of negative things or saying a bunch of negative things is, is, the, is a big red flag. Okay, I'm really falling behind on the chat here. I got to hurry up. Um, Suhail says, please shed some light on why must we go through six rounds of interviews for a position? Uh, usually it's stupidity. It's also because if it's a large organization, a uh, large organization culture is one of mistrust. And in small companies, they want, generally, they want employees to have initiative, to be able to work autonomously without being supervised and just do their job and be effective. That's what they care about. So it's really like about empowering people down here at the bottom to be able to do work without needing lots of supervisors and lots of people enforcing rules. Large organizations, they have a completely opposite culture. They don't want employees to be empowered. They want employees to have to ask for permission to do anything, to get approval for absolutely everything. Uh, it's a culture of blame. So that's why big companies are filled with, you know, People in offices that do nothing all day, but send emails to each other. You know, they don't do any actual work. They just send emails back and forth to each other, right? It's because they want to put everything in writing so that nobody can blame them and claim that, you know, they were incompetent because they have it all in writing, right? I told you to do this two weeks ago. So if it isn't done, it's not my fault, right? It's that kind of culture, okay? So why are there six rounds of interviews? Because if somebody said, look, we're hiring this candidate. I, we're hiring them because I say we're hiring them. End of story. 
get their uh, employment contract out to them by tomorrow. If you do that and that employee quits or there's some other uh, problem with them, you've ruined your reputation. You've stuck your neck out. uh, You've taken a risk and it could be very bad for you. So what they like to do is they like to spread the responsibility around by getting absolutely everybody involved. Okay, the person down here wants to get the person up here to sign off on them hiring this person. So then they can say, well, it wasn't my decision. You approved it. And the person up here says, well, yeah, you know, I did approve it, but you recommended them to me. Right? That's how these things work. So it's a culture of very much like it's shared responsibility. It's groupthink. And that's why they don't want you to come in once. They want you to come in six times to talk to different people each time. And then everybody signs off on that. So no one person is individually responsible and takes the blame if anything bad happens with you so i mean obviously there's exceptions but that's a a lot of times what's going on you know there's also on on top of that you put power politics in there too somebody wants one candidate another person wants another candidate who's going to win right it's whoever comes out you know is the dominant person right so you get all that stuff mixed together it's stupid um The way you really select people at a higher level is you don't have that kind of thing. What you have are more akin to informational interviews. You have many of those with the people that are hiring, whether they're board members or executives, they're usually hiring. So uh, you really get to know the person first. And you also know them from their reputation, from their history, what they've done. Okay. That's why publishing yourself, like like, uh, publicizing yourself, is, is some, is a lot of times a good thing, you know, within your little industry, you know, you've written a few, you've made a few posts on the topic of what you do in your day job that can help, you know, because now you're getting sort of known in some very small circles as sort of an authority on this area. Right. And, and the other advantage is that if other employers see that they can see who you are, Oh, you're the person that's the authority on this. And I know what you think and I know what you stand for because you've put it out there in public. You've put some posts on social networking and stuff to do with this particular technical area. Right. I said I was going to hurry up and then I didn't. Um, Oh, now I lost where I was. Let's see. Um, Okay. So that was for, for Sue Hale. So hopefully that makes sense about the six rounds of interview. Uh, Leonardus says, hello, I enjoy this channel. Thank you. Thank you, Leonardus. I enjoy having you here. It's great to get, uh, great to hear your thoughts. Ice Cold Wasim. Hello, Mr. Bill. I hope you're having a good day. I'm having a great day. I shaved this morning with a really bad razor. It was very painful. And I'm surprised that it's a good thing that this camera isn't in perfect focus because I think I gave myself a rash the size of my face trying to shave this morning. But apart from that, I'm having a great day. Rodrigo Martinez says, Mr. Bill, Wild Bill is the man. Thank you. Thank you. I am the man and everybody knows it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's very flattering that you guys are here and I enjoy getting your questions. There's some very intelligent questions being asked. There's 42 of you guys here. Thank you for joining me. Um, incidentally, I have to say this sometime, so I'll say it now. This course, there's a link in the description. It goes into all the details of networking and informational interviews. So if you do want to go deeper, do your own research out on the internet, okay? But if you want to get my version of it all in one place, that's kind of the thing to look into. Okay, somebody's talking to Gilby. Uh, Leonardus, Leonardus, question. I've been working as a quality assistance engineer, a quality assurance engineer for the last 12 years. I feel that I'm not getting the joy anymore. Oh yeah, I can believe it. Uh, I would like to move into data into being a data security analyst. Okay. Uh, Following your advice on changing career, I would try my luck. Wish me luck. However, if you have more info, please kindly share. Yeah, I think if you've heard me before talk about that, uh, everybody knows that if you want to change a career, networking is the way you change a career. The problem is if you go to a recruiter, the recruiter, like I said earlier, their job is to make a short list of candidates that have the requirements. They're given a list of requirements. Their job is to go out and find people that match those requirements. Okay. That's their job. It's not a very sophisticated job, but 
that's their job. Um, it can, it, it's a very sort of labor intensive job. Now, if you're changing careers, okay, and you put yourself up for a job in a different industry, so in, in your case, uh, being a data security analyst, okay, if you get interviewed for a data security analyst job, the first question that a recruiter is going to have for you is, you know, usually one of the requirements is you have to have previous experience being a data security analyst, right? Not necessarily, but a lot of times that's a requirement. So the first question they're going to have for you is, how many years experience do you have being a data security analyst? And your answer is going to be, well, zero, because I'm changing careers. I've actually been a uh, quality uh, assurance engineer for 12 years. And then they'll, then they'll say to you, this person who knows nothing about quality assurance or data analysis, they will say to you, oh, well, if you have no experience in it, what makes you think you're qualified to do it? You know, you're not qualified to do this. We need people that have experience in this, that actually know what they're doing. So sorry. And then they eliminate you. So how do you get around that? Well, you don't go through a recruiter. You go through networking. You talk to the hiring manager. And if you have a good informational interview with the hiring manager, they like you. They feel that, you know, it's pleasant talking to you. It's pleasant interacting with you. You know, you seem to be on the ball. You seem to know your stuff. You seem to be technically competent. You have a lot of technical skills that they see that you know your, your, your business um, and that you're passionate about it and you guys get along great. You know, they'll give you a chance. They'll say, yeah, you know, we're looking for somebody that uh, can do this and uh, that can work with the other people and uh, that is trainable. And a lot of times they will waive the requirement of experience if they believe in you, right? So that's how people change careers. They go through networking and they don't just talk to a recruiter uh, at the end of a job post. Sue Hale says LinkedIn is a very powerful resource. Yes, it is. It's one of the best resources around. Now, ever since Microsoft bought it, I think it hasn't been as good. They're trying to turn it into Facebook with all the negative aspects of that. So you get a lot of personal posts and you got a, you got a lot of political stuff on there now. And, you know, it just, it, it, it's going in the wrong direction, but it still is a very, very powerful resource. And it's the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best business resource out there for networking. Leonardo says cybersecurity analyst. Okay. Not data. Okay. Um, Ramon. Is that how you say your name? Ramon. That's how I'm going to say it because it's fun. It, sp it puts a little bit of spice and pep into this. Uh, hi. In your expert opinion, what are the real chances of getting hired? I'm over 50 looking for project coordinator position. I got my business bachelor outside the USA. How can I make my profile more attractive? Um, there's very good chances of getting hired, uh, Ramon. Uh, but like always, you do it through networking. Okay, when people see who you are and they see your value, uh, they will hire you. Over 50, not a problem. Even over 50 in like a technical area, not a problem. Okay, the advantage of hiring somebody over 50 is that they're mature, they're professional. Or, or at least they have greater potential to be mature, professional. They don't say or do inappropriate things for a business situation. Uh, they tend to have a bit more self-discipline. They tend to have a little bit better communication skills. They tend to understand interacting with people better than, say, a 20-year-old. So those are some of the advantages. Why you would hire a 20-year-old is that they have much more energy, okay? They have much more passion, more drive, more energy. But why you hire the 50-year-old is that they have all those other great qualities, okay? So if you're worried about the age thing, okay, uh, go to a place where the person making the decisions, the hiring manager, is 50 years old themselves or, or in that ballpark. They're not going to be biased against you for being 50 if they themselves are 50, okay? Uh, so that, that's one way to try and eliminate that issue. Bachelor degree outside the USA, like, listen, nobody cares about your education unless it's like a regulated industry, like unless you're talking about being a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, or something like that where you have to uh, register and have a license. Assuming that's not the case, 
Nobody cares about that if you've had experience inside the host country. Okay. So if you got your bachelor degree in, I don't know, Spain, Pakistan, Venezuela, uh, in Spitzenberg, okay, or Spitzberg, that's where you got your bachelor degree. Um, but you've been working for 20 years in, say, the United States, okay, and you're trying to get a job in the United States. They don't care about that. The fact that you've been working there for 20 years, you've got references in the U.S., that's all that's relevant, okay? Now, how can you make your profile more attractive? Um, well, the thing about your, like you're talking about on LinkedIn, I guess, um, the thing about your profile is that it's more about not having red flags than it is about having good things, okay? You know, you can have like a lot of great things on your profile, but if you've misspelled half the words, that's a deal breaker for most people, right? Uh, if you have a lot of great things on there, you know, I've got a lot of prestigious exp experience or fancy education, but you say something inappropriate, you don't speak in a very business-like way when you have the little bio about yourself or, you know, whatever, that's going to be an issue. If you don't put dates on everything so people can't tell when this occurred or how long you worked in places, that's a red flag. So like, it's about not doing any of those. Okay. That's more important than like thinking up some amazing original pitch or, 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 uh, thing, uh, positive thing that goes on there. I did a video about that, like how to do your LinkedIn profile, like a, an hour long live stream that goes through every field, every part of it. So check my channel there. Uh, just type in the company's expert LinkedIn profile or something like that, and it should come up. Hopefully that helps. Sue Hale, that makes lots of sense. Thank you. Min says, thank you very much for these advices. I always check your channel and watch your videos. Sometimes I download it. Wish you the best, sir. Well, thank you. Thanks, Min. And I wish you all the best. And I believe, yeah, you had some, you had some issues there. So chin up, you know, hopefully things, things improve. You'll start feeling better pretty soon. Um, Ramon says, thanks, Bill. I'm going to try your networking approach. Yeah. Like network, it's like, it's a whole world to step into. There's a lot to learn. It's like, when you're in high school and they first tell you about having to get a job and you're intimidated and confused and there's a lot to learn, it's kind of like that. It's like the same thing all over again, but there are a lot of rewards to people who can pull this off. Okay. And it's really not hard. It just, that requires you to develop certain skills. Okay. And if you stick with it, you get good, you figure what works and what doesn't work. Don't just take advice, go out and try things. You have to learn by trying rather than just listening to everybody's advice, you know, including mine. I can help you. I can tell you what to do. That's why once again, once again, check out that course because I give it to you with like templates and things like this. So I, I tried to make it easy to learn and, you know, in a logical order. So if that's of any interest to you, check, check the link in the description. Um, but yes, uh, how do you say that? N Roz mix 400. Although I definitely need to change my YouTube username too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Change it to like something like John, you know, just something totally boring, but you know, Hey, the people that, you know, choose to call themselves N Roz mix 400. They might be a little bit more colorful, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more of an edge to those type of people. Um, Just Trace says, thank you for having these Q&As. I have a phone interview with a recruiter today uh, with my same company, different division. It's been a while since I've done one of these. What pointers do you have? Um, okay, well, just, I mean, there's not really that much difference between an internal interview and an external interview. In an internal interview, they may trust you a little more. Because, you know, especially if you've been with the company a while, like say longer than a year, if you've been there longer than a year, that shows that, you know, it eliminates the possibility that there's a lot of red flags with you because people have had a chance to work with you to see who you really are and, and you pass, right? So 
So it might be a little bit easier in that sense. Just be likable, be as, as likable and as agreeable as you can. Okay. Don't say anything negative. Don't ask anything negative. Uh, try to minimize any negative points of yours. You know, uh, do your preparation. I mean, this is today, so you're kind of past the point of doing preparation. But um, yeah, I mean, that, that's about it, really. Just, you know, and then on top of it, whichever way, you know, you're not going to know either way which way it's going to go. So just don't sweat it. If you don't end up hearing back from them, it's not an issue. Just, you know, work on the next opportunity. Uh, if you do end up hearing back from them and it's, and it's good news, then great, you know. But either way, this is not a judgment of who you are. This is just a test to see if you happen to be what they just happen to be looking for. A lot of times people are looking for stupid things. They're looking for either some, someone that's impossible, a, a theoretical candidate that doesn't exist, or they're looking for somebody, that, like the things that they should have are idiotic. You know, you have no control over this. Just do your best. Try to be positive, and that's the best you can do. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Okay, I have to sign off pretty soon. It's been uh, over an hour, but uh, Rod Harris says, Hey, Bill, you missed my question. Yeah, I don't recall seeing a question from you, Rod. Did it get caught up in the, uh, what do you call it? Like the spam filter or whatever it's called? Uh, you have about a minute to, to type it in again if you want to try that. And if it shows up, I'll be happy to answer. Now, Just Trace. Which one was Just Trace? Don't recall seeing Just Trace before, but it says, thanks. It happened very quick. It applied on Monday. I applied on Monday. Okay. Oh, Just Trace, the previous one. Yes, the interview. Okay, well, good, good. You know, so... Hopefully you're not like really wound up and stressed up, stressed out about it. If it just sort of landed in your lap, uh, most recently, that's good. That, that helps. I'd much rather have things just land, you know, like suddenly, you know, and then you deal with it rather than, you know, they're coming from like months away and, you know, you get nervous about it or something like that. I I'd prefer to have it happen quickly. Milo says, I have a group interview for a sales position this week. I passed the first interview yesterday, which was all behavior questions. Do you have any advice uh, for a sales interview? Well, you probably, I mean, I'm not, uh, the sales is not my background. Uh, what I do know is that you have to be able to have a rapport with many different types of people. So if you're having a panel interview, um, I would imagine the smart thing to do would be to have different types of people on the panel. You have an accountant. You have the director of sales, you have another salesperson, you have the recruiter, something like that, you know, and knowing who the people are, if you, if there's any way for you to know the, uh, individuals before you get there, like if they've said in an email, you're going to be interviewing with this person, this person, this person, this person, it really helps if you have that, because then you can look them up on LinkedIn and then try and memorize it. If you, if, if they haven't done that, when you go into the room, if you have a business card, it's, it's, it's an adva uh, it's advantageous because you can give your business card like to, to you know, to, to, to everybody here, here you go. Here's your, I mean, I'm trying to do the gesture. You can't see it, but you know, you're giving your business card to everybody. And the cue is that they then give their business cards to you. And that's good because if you're sitting in front of four people on the other side of the table, you can put their business cards on the table and you can see, ah, okay. Recruiter, director of sales, salesperson, accountant. You know, and so when you're, when the accountant asks you a question and you are responding directly to the accountant, you can, knowing that they're an accountant, you can give them a more appropriate answer. That's maybe what they're looking for as opposed to the director of sales. Okay. So it helps to keep that straight in your head. I mean, you would probably know this if you're in sales, but you know, that that's the only advice that really leaps to mind at the last minute there. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Tanya says, thank you. Uh, this life was super useful. Okay. Hopefully you're not about to do anything rash. Uh, oh, live live stream, I guess is, was, was very useful. I, I thought you meant your life. Uh, but thank you, Tanya. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Milo too. And thanks to everybody that's here. There's 43 of you guys here. 
Thank you so much. I hope you got something out of this. I do one of these every week, like a general Q&A about careers and jobs and interviewing. So I'll be back next Wednesday at the same time. I will be on a live stream tomorrow, but not about careers and or not about job interviews and resumes. It'll be about side hustles and entrepreneurship and stuff like that. So uh, if you're interested in that, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Best of luck and take care.